Hi, I'm Jay Butch with CertainTeed Roofing. This video will help you earn the Master Shingle Applicator Qualification. It covers things that every good roofer should know. Things about safety, ventilation, roof system components, flashing details, and application methods. Even after you become a Master Shingle Applicator, it's a good idea to keep SAM, as we call it, the Shingle Applicator's Manual, in the truck. You can use it as a training tool or a point of reference with homeowners. I use the manual when I go in to sell a roof that I'm showing the specifications and I'm looking at their old beat up roof and showing them uh, what's going on with the roof and why it's failing. And because of that, we put it in, our write in writing on our contracts that we're stall installing the roof according to the manual. And so it holds us accountable and it puts us on a higher level than Joe Sixpack Roofer that's not doing that. We train our crews, they're expected to do certain things to make sure that each job is installed the same way. Um, we like to set the expectations through the manual that CertainTeed puts out. Um, they're all trained, they do the tests, and they make sure that they understand the importance of the integrity roof system, um, all the way down to how the product is put onto the job sites and how it's all cleaned up. First and foremost, safety has got to be your top priority. It's just not worth taking a chance on the roof. It's like a car accident. Everybody thinks it happens to the other guy. Nobody thinks they're going to fall off the roof. But what if it is you or your best friend or your crew leader? It's not worth taking the chance. Uh, once a week, the crews all get together. We have a uh, on-the-job meeting about safety and uh, OSHA compliance. Uh, it's important that I get to send my guys home. Uh, to see their families and uh, you know they, they're coming to work to make money if they fall off the roof they're not making anything for a long time. We have a captive insurance group that we're a part of so there are a group of uh, roofing contractors that are our like kind and quality of, of contractor um, and we have a toolbox talk that's weekly with our sales guys and our production guys so that um, we we produce that paperwork and, and evidence of a toolbox talk every week. Well safety on the job starts even before coming out to the job and having the men trained in safety and what's acceptable behavior. Uh, it's ongoing when my superintendent who's also my safety guy comes out he's always looking for what they're doing and embarrassing them with what they're not doing right. We've got a very steep roof here the crew's all tied off they're very safety conscious. It's not worth taking a chance. Even I'm wearing a harness. And now with the new OSHA regs, any e-fight six feet or more, you've got to use a personal fall arrest system or a guardrail. Setting up a ladder seems like a basic thing, but there's a few safety tips you should remember. You should extend the ladder above the eaves three to three and a half feet. If your ladder's going to be in place for a long period of time, tie it off and secure the bottom with a few bundles. Make sure that the ladder is angled correctly. The distance of the foot of the ladder from the wall should be about one-fourth the height of the wall. And last but not least, let's talk about dealing with the homeowners. How you conduct yourself, how you answer their questions, how the crew conducts themselves. Uh, things like loud music, smoking on the job, throwing cigarette butts in the yard. It's all very important to that consumer. The average consumer buys one or two roofs in her life. You do it all day long they look at things totally differently than you do. So it's important to address their questions if they have any. If you can't answer the question, tell them you'll check with your supervisor and get back to them. As if roofing wasn't tough enough, you also have to contend with mother nature. There are several weather related factors that'll impact your application methods and how you apply the roofing products. Products like WinterGuard will not stick to a wet or frozen deck and they lose most of their stickiness below 40 degrees. If the job can't be put off, tack the winter guard in place with a few fasteners. In cold weather, shingles become very brittle and stiff. The temperature must be warm enough outside so that you can form the shingles or store them in a warm location. Also, the shingles may not seal down right away and the tabs can be lifted by the winter winds. When using nail guns, you run the risk of nails blowing through the brittle shingles. So to prevent this problem, some installers will switch to hand nailing in the winter. In the hot summer months, you've got other hazards to contend with. 
you've got dehydration and burning hot shingles. The rooftop temperature can be 50 to 75 degrees above the ambient temperature. You need to take precautions to avoid scuffing your shingles. Use cushions, soft-soled shoes, and if it's an approved application method, you can use the racking method to stay off the shingles.